Hi, Susan here. Okay, today we're going to be talking about the do's and don'ts on sewing machines for fashion design. What do you really need in your design room? And that's what's next. Hi guys, so if you're new to my channel, my name is Susan Elias. I'm a fashion designer for over 30 years and I've both worked for companies as well as had my own. And I'm a teacher and consultant and instructor and I have an extensive YouTube channel that teaches you everything about fashion design. I am so excited to tell you that I have now 19,000 plus subscribers and I thank you all for that. Keep subscribing if you're new. But uh, YouTube has now given me the opportunity to have a, a premier subscription base platform on my actual YouTube channel. So I'm excited about that because it's another way for you guys to support my channel as well as get some in-depth and more of a personal approach to your fashion design dilemmas. So I have on my YouTube channel, right underneath the actual um, bar that is there on the top, you'll see a join button. You can see this on your computer mostly and you can just click on that join button and I have two levels available for you to, ch to check out. One is just to a channel support so you can support me so I can continue to, to give you these videos on a weekly basis. And the other one is a premiere channel where you get to have um, two videos a month with me live streaming, helping you answering questions, demonstrating uh, tasks or things that you are having trouble with, and anything that you possibly will need and desire in fashion design. So you can join that today. Please check it out. I have a short video explaining that and let me know that you are going to join. Put it in the description box below. I'd love to hear from you. Let's get started. What is really needed? And I want to do do's and don'ts on sewing machines for fashion design. So I'm going to be talking primarily about ready to wear women's uh, making, designing and manufacturing tops and blouses and dresses and, and, and bottoms and maybe some light coats and that type of thing, but nothing uh, that is in other subcategories such as swimwear, embroidery or home decor men's tailoring, and those type of subcategories. I'm just talking about the broad sense of making women's wear clothing and the essential machines that are necessary in order to accomplish that, whether you're going to be doing it at, on a sample base or small production, or that you are even going to go further with this. This will give you an idea of what you really need for the basics in fashion design. Number one, most important machine to have in your atelier or your sewing room or your design room is a straight stitch machine. A machine that will give you a nice, steady, basic stitch that is very, very durable, very consistent, and with speed and accuracy. This is my first sewing machine, that I, well, one of my first actually, that I actually used when I was going to FIT and actually learning fashion design. It is a heavy duty, it is still considered a home sewing machine, but it basically is um, all metal, it was super sturdy, I was able to do even leather, I was even able to put a little fur on, so I was able to do some high level things with this machine. Um, and I also keep it in my design room and I won't get ahead of myself and I'll tell you why in a bit. My All my machines kind of broke down, including this one during the pandemic, so I have this inexpensive singer that I was using because it has an essential stitch, industrial straight stitch doesn't have. Okay, let me not get ahead of myself. You can either have a home sewing machine that will give you a nice good straight stitch and back tack or you can have an industrial sewing machine that will give you the same thing. The only thing difference between, well there's several things different between a home sewing and an industrial machine. One of the main things is that industrial machines usually are designed to do only one thing. So my industrial sewing machine just goes straight. It does nothing else. It goes straight and it has a back bar that will allow you to back tack and that's it. It is heavy duty and it is durable 
and it'll give you a very consistent stitch on multiple layers of fabric and different types of fabric. Also, it's important to know what you're designing, what type of fabrics you will be using in your atelier, what kind of fabrics you will be using for your designs, to know specifically and more in depth what type of machine you will need. The beauty of having home sewing machines is they have an array of stitches. They have more stitches than you probably will ever need if you're doing basic design for women's wear. They have, some of them have cams and other very important stitches. That is not totally necessary unless you're doing heavy embroidery or you're possibly doing swimwear and you need to have other stitches. Yes, I've noticed that I've needed in most of my career a good zigzag as well as a straight stitch machine. Some industrial machines do have that capability of doing both and I was torn between actually purchasing that machine rather than the Juki DDL 8700. I chose this because I still had a zigzag capabilities on my regular sewing machine. So the zigzag or stretch stitch will be helpful if you're making leotards or you're making swimwear or you're making any kind of body hugging stretch type of garment. So that can be coming handy if you have that with your actual home sewing machine. So keep that in mind. But other than that, guys, you're not going to need too much. The difference between this machine and this machine, let's get a little closer. So I just wanted to point out some things about the industrial machine that your basic home sewing machine doesn't have. This thing is solid metal. And what's amazing about it is that it is sturdy and it's strong and it is durable. Um, the new motors now, we, the old motors that were clutch motors so they would gear up and make noise coming on and off. The new motors are servo motors and you can see this machine is now on because the light is on and there is zero sound because it pulls the motor when you're only sewing and when you're not whereas a clutch motor will pull the capacity to gear it up and to gear it down. Another thing that's very important is that the servo motor, which I will show you a picture of, um, has a dial on it, and that dial actually has speed control. So it has ability to go faster and slower depending upon your abilities to sew or your needs to sew. Also here, that the regular sewing machines don't have is that it has a very, very strong feed dog, which I'll show you a, a close up of. And that feed dog holds the fabric sturdy so that you're, can, you're able to sew with very little maneuvering with your hands, that it will grip the fabric and sew fast and accurately. And that's what's so important about an industrial machine rather than having the home sewing machine. I have a whole unboxing on the DDL 8700. Please watch that video so you can learn all about this machine. Okay, let's get to the second one. Number two most important machine, sewing machine in your atelier or your design room. And that is the baby lock, the serger, the marrow machine, or the overlock machine. Those are all different terms to meaning the same thing. Some machines have a little slightly different stitch and that's what those names are. I had both a home sewing machine, which you have here, a baby lock, as well as a professional Juki uh, serger in my design room when I was making mini production or my sample room. If you're starting out, as a new designer or a new company, you might want to just get a, a home sewing version because they're a little bit easier to understand, to thread, and to maneuver. They basically do about the same stitch. The difference is that the home sewing version will not be as fast, it probably won't hug the fabric as well, and um, it's just, it's, it's made to do sometimes more than one stitch. The overlocks and the baby locks that you get that are home sewing have other capacities, again, that the industrial machines do not. The industrial machines will just give you that one stitch. But your home sewing version, you can take the foot out, you can do a blind hem with it, you can even change the stitch to do like a little pearl type of stitch. 
And you can also even, some of them you can feed elastic in them. So you can put stretch on stretch garments or swimwear. So the home sewing version, again, has more different capabilities, whereas the industrial machines usually just have one capability. And they do it really well and really fast. But that's important to have in your sewing room, and that's number two. Let's get to three. Number three, most important machine in your design room or atelier is a machine that will give you a very good buttonhole. Hence the reason why I've kept my, my home sewing machines in my atelier or throughout my career because in, uh, getting an industrial machine to give you a buttonhole is very expensive and very excessive and is really only necessary if you're going to be doing lots and lots of shirts or lots and lots of tops that involve buttonholes or you're doing some mini production or production. Getting a really good home sewing machine that will give you that zigzag stitch, will give you that stretch stitch, will give you a good straight stitch that is heavy, that is strong enough to, and capable enough to, to handle the fabric you're designing to do, work with, um, is most important. But getting a good buttonhole, whether it is an inexpensive machine that you can get a hold of and you know it will give you a good buttonhole, or a little bit higher scale machine that will give you a buttonhole, is super important as a fashion designer in your atelier because you're going to really just basically need three stitches, right? You're going to be able to go straight, you're going to need some kind of a zigzag or stretch stitch, and you're going to need your buttonhole. So that is the most important stitch for number three for your sewing room. The most important thing I want you to get from this video, guys, is that whatever you decide to pick, whether it is a home sewing machine or an industrial machine, that the, the goal to achieve is the most professional garment that you can manufacture. There's always been a fine line, guys, between crafty and home sewing looks and an actual garment that you would see in a store or you would purchase from a man from a design house. You always want to strive for that. That has been the number one thing that separates you from just being a, a seamstress or just being a small time designer to somebody who will be well respected in the industry. So whatever machine you decide to choose, just keep in mind it is the accuracy and the abilities of the person using the machine that will set you apart and make your garments that much more special. So I hope you understand this video. I hope this helps you. Give me a comment. Let me know if it, it was enlightening and you learned something new. Give it a like. Give this video a like. Share it. And I will see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.